Hi everybody, I'm going to be making the ball uh, chocolate cherry jam, which is more of a preserve. You could put it on toast and that, but people um, in the reviews suggest putting it on like ice cream and uh, or just eating it out of the jar. It's supposed to be really good. So I'm going to be doing that today with the rest of my cherries. As you can see up here, my cherry jam with no pectin uh, recipe um, that I made. And I'm doing these, so I'm going to show you that right now. So there is six, just over six cups of cherries. I'm going to chop them now. Now I'm just going to chop my cherries. There we go. Doesn't that look wonderful? Here, it's been over five minutes of this. I just turned off the water. Oh, no. There's the jams. Now, I'm going to put them on a towel on my counter. You never, ever want to put hot jars on your counter because the um, temperature of the jars and the counter are different, and you'd get like a temperature shock, and the jars will crack and break. Um, this lessens that um, option. It could still happen, but probably not. So, see, it's already sealing. No, I'm just going to make sure that the lids are tight. Oh, that's two. Sometimes they loosen. The three. That's like the best sound for a canner. Hot. Just trying to move it so I can get that last jar to tighten with the towel. Yeah, let's tighten. So, there you go. That's the cherry jam, no pectin, low sugar. And that's the one that's left. Look how thick it is. I'm going to put this used lid from before on it, and that's going straight in the fridge. So I'm going to let that cool anyways, but I'll know. See, that one is different. So there you go. Enjoy. Bye. Okay, so the recipe states put the six cups of cherries and one package or six tablespoon of the pectin. This is the no-name brand here in uh, Canada. It's usually the cheapest. And... quarter of a cup of bottled, uh, didn't make the hole big enough, um, bottled lemon juice. Again, I'm just using lemon juice I got. Um, I think this is from the dollar store. There's a quarter of a cup. 
register all that together so it's nicely well mixed. And then in the meantime, I have six cups of sugar. And then you're going to come to my baking cupboard here, and we'll get to my cocoa. Oops, short per people problems. I have to go my tippy toes. And that one's not open. Where's the one that's open? Is there one open? I might have to open up one. There we go. So I get this cocoa from Costco. It's like the best cocoa. Better than Hershey. I used to always just get Hershey. Make sure this is stirring. It doesn't get burnt. There, I get that stirring. And then it says two thirds of a cup of cocoa mixed with the sugar. a bit and then we dump this in with the cherries all at once so I just need to mix it a little bit so I guess there's not big chunks of cocoa and it's more easily dissolved sugar powder smoke <laughs> so look, that. Oh. look how beautiful that is oh my goodness supposedly this tastes oops I touched the hot water bath canner it's hot um, supposedly this tastes like black forest cake. Mmm. Without the cake. So you could probably put this in as a, the jam inside the black forest cake. Oh, that would be wonderful. So, now just get that, bring that to a boil. So there is the beautiful chocolate cherry jam. Now I'm going to fill jars. I have two little itty bitty jelly jars. They're like um, half a cup. I want to do those ones up first as those will be gifts for my kid's teacher. There you go. And I'll do these. I did not skim because I don't want to necessarily waste And from my experience, the skimming is just wasting it. It settles down. There might be sometimes a little bit of air bubbles. Oh, that one's a bit full. I'll have to take away from that one. <laughs> but uh, usually it just settles down by the time you put the lid on and you can it. So.
and it makes more than six pints because I did that's that would be not six pints six half pints Mark jars. In there. It actually made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine um, cups. So, wow. Now I'm just going to put the hot lids on top. Well, I'm going to wipe them with a cloth first. All right, now I'm going to wipe these jars. Make sure that they're clean because you need to have a clean edge. This one's really messy. Need a clean edge to uh, get a seal. Because if you don't get your jars sealed, then they have to go in the fridge and you have to use them up. And looking at the reviews this is a really good recipe to have on hand and it'll last for a long time and a good ice cream topper or you could have it as as a dawn toast but uh, I say it's good for like desserts and cheesecake or All clean. Oh. There we go. Now, let's get the lids out. Get another lid. I'll let that soak in the water. So I just want to show you. I buy my lids from the grocery store usually near the end of the season. So I'll let that soak in the water. And um, I'll get them marked down. I got wide mouth lids and the regular lids for a dollar last year. Around Thanksgiving in Canada. Um, Halloween time so sometimes even as late as Christmas but I like getting if I can save money especially on things that won't go bad I got those for a dollar and got uh, pickle fresh and uh, no, pickle crisp and fresh fruit containers which are normally like four dollars a thing here for something I got them for 94 cents. So, which is crazy deal. They just didn't want to store them for another year. And plus, they expire, supposedly, or, or there's a sell by date. Maybe not necessarily expire. So, they're just like um, not chemicals, but uh, citric acid and stuff like that. There's a sell, at least a sell by date. I mean it's gonna go bad it just means that they can't sell it by that point so just make sure that the jars are finger tight look at the last lid there So 
Now, we'll put these in a hot water bath. We have to make sure that the water goes over the, the lids, which they, you can see they're already doing. There we go. Now I bring this to a boil, and then once it's at a boil, which is starting to get to there close, um, I will uh, boil it for 10 minutes and then I'll take them out. Okay, and it has been 10 minutes. Now we will just Take these out, the thing, and put them on a towel. You never want to put your jars directly on your countertop or onto a cold stove just because of. Uh, the temperature shock and they could break. You also want to have a bit of air circulation around them so that they can cool. Don't they look pretty? Soon you'll be hearing them pop as they slowly start to cool. Ones. Oh, here's the popping. Ooh. Now you can hear the difference. Those are pop are popped from the other one. See? See that one hasn't popped. You can hear it's more hollow. That one just popped. This one still needs to pop. And you can sometimes see, if you can see with the light hair a bit, the indent in the lid versus that one still up. You can see it's, it's hard to tell with the lighting. That's a little bit indented right there. Well, this one, there's nothing. So now you let this sit for at least 24 hours on the counter and then you take off the rings for storage. You put the rings on when you're um, keeping them in the fridge but for storage you don't want the rings on because it would cause rust and also um, can prevent a, a, a bad seal from being exposed. So if it doesn't seal and a bad seal does happen and it pops open you want the lid to pop open so you could see oh look there's mold growing in there or whatever like botulism gas exposing it not so much of a concern botulism with jam because of the sugar content but um, definitely you want the lids the rings off so that the lids can be exposed and then for storage, just a reminder not to store other jams, like other jars, like one on top of each other. Um, there should be another shelf. They say sometimes it's okay for a cardboard um, 
piece of uh, cardboard in them so you can stack them so that the pressure is not individually on each jar. But it's recommended to each jar have their own shelf. So when you're storing things in your cupboards and stuff, um, try and find shelves, especially if they're adjustable. You know, make some shelves only for the uh, half pints and then some for the pints and some for the quarts, etc. Or the one cup, two cup, one liter. So that you have a good way to store them. So there we go. Have a great day. Thanks for joining me. If you like the canning videos and you'd like to see more, comment below. And please like, share, subscribe.